This first round of seedlings are the seedlings that need the heat mat. It's simple as that, but you need to use the heat mat correctly to really see results. So I'm gonna give you three tips that you really should follow if you wanna maximize results and avoid harm of your seedlings. The truth is the heat mats are not meant to be bought in bulk. You're only meant to have one or two of them around. They're designed for people who have busy lives, whether that be a mom or someone with a full-time job and a YouTube channel combined together, you name it. This allows you to start seeds in waves. It's called wave planting essentially, but with different varieties. I can start one block every four days, give or take. This allows me to start just my peppers and then just my flowers and then just my tomatoes slowly over time, rather than spending an entire Saturday planting all my seed cells and then putting them at room temperature and waiting for them to germinate over two weeks. It's meant to be a rotating space. So place your seed mat in an area where you can easily access it. And you know you're gonna be able to move plants off quickly and efficiently because over the next two weeks, you're probably gonna have quite a few different trays just in that one space. So that's really the intended purpose of a seed mat. The reason why heat mats are so great for seed starting really comes down to uniform germination, quick and effective germination, and potentially warding off damping or seed rot just in general. So with that being said, the use of a heat mat and the use of it correctly is going to be key. The first thing we wanna look at is timing. How long should you be running your heat mat? There's a lot of controversy out there as to whether or not it's 24 hours or off at night and on during the day. The reason that on and off discussion happens between night and day comes down to the thought that during the night, the temperatures tend to drop. And this is true that temperatures ambiently do drop in environments when the sun is not out. The truth here is that the soil is a heat sink in a way. And so because of its heat sink features, we tend to see that the soil actually stays warm despite the sun being set. This means seeds in general in the wild don't experience this drop in temperature during the nighttime hours and instead usually are exposed to sustained heat through the day and the night. Now in our small seedling trays, we don't have as much soil and so our temperature can drop really quickly when the heat is not applied. This means that the continuous supply of the heating pad 24 hours until germination occurs is going to be key in maximizing these results. So rule of thumb, 24 hours on until germination is done. Next tip is when to remove the seeds and why. So the reality here is that seeds, once they germinate under heat, then begin to become really laggy. And in some cases, if you're growing breast case species, maybe kale or for example, we tend to see that these plants that are normally used to cool soil. So because of that, if we place a seed in an environment with a heated mat, we tend to see these seedlings become very, very leggy, meaning the space between the soil and that first set of cotyledons is quite long. Now, this is okay if you're in a rush and things need to get germinated, that's by all means fine, but just something to consider. Now, if we do this with exotic seeds, for example, hot peppers that do need the heat to germinate, we put them in an environment, they germinate, and then we continue to leave them in place. We tend to get really like seedlings. The key here is to remove the seedlings once they germinate. Germination means we see the two cotyledons unfold, whether they're circular or, or skinny leaf structures, whatever the case is. The moment we see germination, we want to pop them off and then place them in an environment where they're at regular room temps. And the last tip is avoid putting similar plants in the same cell. The reason for this really truly comes down to the different different rates of germination. If you're choosing to grow peppers and pansies and petunias all at the same time using a heat mat, I would suggest doing six cell blocks and having it so that they're able to be separated. So have them all in the heat mat at the same time, but once the peppers or pansies or petunias germinate, you're gonna remove those blocks and place them in a different area. But that's all I have for you guys on seed mats, heat mats, seed starting heat mats. Oh, tongue twister. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.